Scientists are testing the effectiveness of new structures installed on both ends of the Hood Canal Bridge, all to help fish survive. The state's operating budget contributing more than $6 million of funding for this. Check it out. It's a very significant barrier to migration. Scientists and environmentalists are worried, concerned that every year the Hood Canal Bridge is hindering millions of tiny steelhead, chum, and Chinook salmon from migrating to the ocean. But there's a whole line of fish underwater. Even though much of the Hood Canal Bridge is just 15 feet below the water, and there's almost 300 feet of water below that, the depth of 15 feet is still too deep for many juvenile steelhead to pass through. Even though it's a floating structure, because they're so surface oriented, they just move back and forth. The steelhead approaching the bridge are only seven inches long. Chum and Chinook salmon are even smaller. Many of them get disoriented and stuck, making the fish easy prey for predators like seals. Shara Ainsley explains how this happens. She's a senior project manager at Long Live the Kings. The seals come up and they use the bridge to kind of corral the fish and they're able to capture the fish more easily. The new yellow structures designed to help the fish look like half of a boxing ring with netting on the top. What the fish will encounter is a flat surface um, that helps to guide them past a, a corner of the bridge where an eddy would form. Scientists will assess how fish are affected by the new construction. We're tagging individual fish with a, a little acoustic tag. It allows us to track them, um, you know, sort of like the, the tags that people put on on their pets. Hans Daubenberger is a senior research scientist for the Port Gamble Sklalem tribe, a community that relies on salmon harvesting for their way of life. It's what can we do to ensure that there are are resources for future generations. This is a project years in the making, done in collaboration with NOAA, Washington State Department of Fish and Wildlife, the Port Gamble Sklalem Tribe, the Navy, Washdot, local governments, and Long Live the Kings. Ainsley explains why this has taken years of studying and designing. You want to make sure that you have the studies solid so that you're making good decisions. Long Live the Kings, along with other partners, hopes that this solution will only be temporary, saying that the long-term fix would be for the bridge to be entirely replaced. Ainsley says finding solutions to support fish requires thinking both short and long term. Think like the tribes and be thinking seven generations down the road, but also be thinking what can we do today. WashDOT is working with these groups on the issue. WashDOT tells me there are no plans to replace the existing Hood Canal Bridge, saying it doesn't have the funding allocated from the legislature to replace it. WashDOT says that the list of bridges the agency needs to replace or repair across the state is long.